Hello, welcome to Mysteries of Athos, episode or session 13, I think we're on. Uh, we uh, are, this is a Dark Sun stream using AD&D 2nd edition rules. Um, we've, uh, uh, we're coming to the end, I guess, of a, a, the current a bit of a story or whatever. I don't know if story is the right word, but adventure, set of adventures. Uh, journeys into ruined cities and uh, hidden hills um, and also TPKs against Boulettes, uh, uh, which I think taught people a lot of stuff <laughs> uh, but and now at uh, the part what's that alex well and bullets and many other things you know scorpions cactuses. yeah many other things nearly tpk yeah you've had near tpks versus lots of things but the hot nearly tpk plus total <laughs> retreat and uh and flight was really bullet <laughs> yes um, definitely the worst so yeah we uh yeah We'll get going in a second. Uh, we have tonight, uh, we've got Alex playing Gargi, who is a halfling air druid. Uh, Jay is playing Garrus, who's a human gladiator. Kent is played by Tom. Kent is a dwarven gladiator. Um, Beej is playing Marcia, a human rogue. And we are expecting, uh, he's getting back late, but we're expecting Simon, who plays our um, uh, Ben Tusi, our dwarven fire cleric. Uh, he's very enthusiastic about fire, so <laughs> we will. Um, small correction. Yes, Jay. Gar Garrus is a half elf. Oh, he's a half elf. Uh, yeah, I can never tell them apart. Um... <laughs> <laughs> right? Is that is my? I've got loads of tags on Twitter. Let me just go and check that. <laughs> um... uh, so yeah, uh, what happened last time? Well, someone who was here, not Jay. <laughs> Um, not not a terrible amount actually. We just kind of we'd we'd finished off at the. Um... <laughs> You're making it sound bad, Alex. You're making the game well, sound bad. It, no, no, no. It, 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 was, it was good. Not nothing particularly <laughs> dangerous happened. You know, we'd we'd finished off at the um yeah the the box canyon. Um, we continued on our journey yeah. towards Balik. We had a a few a few encounters. Nothing too dangerous. Like we um. We we ended up we accidentally camped far too close to some dwarves and nearly annoyed them, but we just said hello and then left them alone and they left us alone. Um, I guess we know where there's some miners now if we need to find miners in the future. Um, yeah. we had a very close call with some um uh some fry cream. Um and we just hid and didn't fight them and they didn't see us, so Nothing really happened there. Um, I think I think that was about it. I think it was shortly after that we we ended the session fairly close to Barley. You, know, you, you thought you thought you you tried to hunt some Erdlu. Yeah. Oh yes, yes, the Erdlu as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think you you killed an Erdlu at least, didn't you? I think you got some meat yeah, out Ken of got that. Final hit on it. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, it was uh, the most productive thing that you've done in ages. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, we'll continue. <laughs> what, and why are you going to Barlick? You can see it uh, on the Roll20 map. You can see where the party is. They're south of that silt inlet, uh, about to come through the pass here um, and onto the main road to go to Barlick, ruled by the uh, kindly dictator Andropinus. Uh, but why, why is the party going to Barlick? Well, I, I can't speak for the, the party. Um, Gar Gargi's not quite sure why he's going to, to Barlick. He's It's some kind of degenerate <laughs> hive of, of, you know, scum and slavery or something. Um, it's a terrible place to be. Um, you, you know, event eventually he'll want to, like, deal with that, you know, get rid of slavery, slavery's bad, etc., etc. But, it, you know, it's a, perhaps a, a future problem. Um, yeah. I think the rest of the party wants to sell some some scrap metal or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we're in it for the coin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No one else cares about slavery apparently. Um, I think. Okay, I think so. Ben oh, I heard the map. Some... So what's that, Alex? Ben Ben Bentusi yeah. had something about like wanting to free some gladiators or something. That that was Ken. That was. Um... Oh, was that Dwarven, Kent? Dwarven focus. Hey, Kent, yeah. Yeah. But specifically, well, he wants. His Dwarven free, focus is free gladiators. gladiators. <laughs> he's not 
Ah. You know, he's not got any strong opinions on the institution as a whole. Well, perhaps <laughs> we can work together on that someday. Mate, yeah, you might convince him if you, uh, you know, give him some political speeches. He might do one round. <laughs> I, I, I will radicalise him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Gar Gargi, it turns out, is a terrorist. <laughs> so, part of the... What, what, what the Sorcerer Kings like to call the Al-Qaeda of Dark Sun. <laughs> yeah, trying to uh, free their slaves and whatnot. <laughs> How dare they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, at uh, the yeah on the map, you are at the edge of that hex. That's we specifically, I think, travelled that way. So you'd finish the hex or something. Was that and you camped at the edge of the hex? I think was the idea. Uh, so that we didn't have to work out where you were in the hex. And it is in rocky barrens. It's point seven five hexes a day, isn't it? I think we worked out your movement speed was. Though I guess on the road it will improve, so. Hopefully. Uh, yeah. Um, I guess probably you need one day to travel to the road then, and then it's going to be on the road all the way back, so you bug. Mm -hmm. Nice. And... Nice. Uh, that's going to be... Uh, that'll be one and a half. Two and a half like three and a half hexes by, um, by road. Probably just work out what that is so we, we know how long you have to travel. Uh, time and movement. Oops. Hmm. Uh. I'm trying to think what a just doesn't actually uh, say. I mean, pr probably we should assume that road is movement cost of one, shouldn't we? Does does it not say? That yeah, would be logical. Yeah. No, st Stony Barrens two, Sandy Waste three, <laughs> Salt Flats is one. We'll assume it's one. As in, it's this is a major road. You're following tracks and stuff now, but this yeah. is actually like a uh, a. <laughs> Yeah, just like in our world, they call it a metal road, and you're like, oh, it's a metal road. It has no metal in it, just like in our world. Uh, but yes, cool. So, uh, in that case, uh, what's your your movement speed? What's the party's top speed? Six, I think. I guess it's going to be one point. You're going to be going 1.5, aren't you? 1.5 hexes a day. Um so great three and a half so it's going to be on the third day of travel assuming you don't die which might happen why why would you say that <laughs> uh, alex you can get us started uh with a d6 oh curses i haven't d6 changed my... your encounters you get started i haven't changed my name on this server so i'm still at the top of the list uh d6 yeah <laughs> Alex has started changing Two. his name in my service, so he doesn't have to roll encounters first. Yep, uh, cool. So that's your slow day. Um, and that'll take the whole day to, I guess, get up across there. You're actually crossing underneath the sort of feet of the mountains there, uh, right along the edge of the estuary of the Forked Tongue, the southern branch there. Um, and, uh, yeah, coming up to the main road, which is very different from the kind of the... what. I guess must have been an old coast road of some kind. Uh, the one that, well, it goes inside by the lake, in fact, uh, over here by your Aracocra friends. Uh, but which is pretty, uh, pretty, um, yeah, it's hard packed, but it's it's not ideal. It's got rocks all over it. In the sand, there's bits that just turn into, you know, more sandy morass. But here, this is a uh, wide paved roadway, uh, large stone blocks. Um uh, you know, you the uh, your you can get your cart up onto it from the uh, the slight slipway, and uh, suddenly, uh, on the one hand, you're going a lot quicker, but on the other hand, if anything, the suspension is struggling more because it's on a completely hard surface, so it's just <laughs> sort of jolting anyone who's in the uh, in the wagon. 
Uh, but I guess you'll camp you're off really. the road for that night. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, well, someone's driving it, aren't they? Is Kent driving it? Uh, yeah, maybe. Maybe Zedric is, actually. Yeah, because I think you'd... Uh, we did discuss this last time. Uh, so, in the second day, then... Oh, sorry, the, second, the first night. Uh, do you want to roll the encounter? Um, does anyone have, like, water fine or anything like there. that? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You do that, too. Oh, uh, Garrus have water protection, Jay, I feel like? It's not water, heat protection. Heat protection, uh, yes. Heat protection and water finding on Gargi, isn't it? Yeah, and I've got Kent both. As well, actually. Was it yeah. roll under con for heat protection? Heat protection is intelligence minus two, and water finding is just intelligence. Intelligence as in so roll under. Roll equal or under int minus two. Int yeah. minus two, not yeah, minus two from the roll under your Equal or under int minus two. Okay, so that's success for Kent. So, uh, well, that's definitely a fail on heat protection uh, and yeah. on water finding. Water finding succeeds, so I only take half water. Water finding means you find a gallon of water, right? Uh, I think you find... Uh, uh, oh, no, it is you find water for the... Or it's like just enough water for the day, but yeah. Yeah, it's enough water so, for you for the day, so you actually go to zero effectively. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And then what about you, Jay? Uh, heat protection fails. Fails. Okay. Six point five. Hang on. I realise as well that I hadn't been taking water off of the Kanks, so how, any idea how many days total we've travelled in, roughly? Like 10? From there, like, it would have been 0.5 for a couple of hexes, so it would have been one day to the, to the Rocky Barrens, and then there's 1.5, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, .5, call it 5 hexes of Rocky Barrens at 0.75. So it's going to be like 9 or something, isn't it? I'm just going to go for 10 because it's a nice round number. <laughs> and I will take... Yeah. 20, 20. <laughs> if you die of dehydration in the next couple of days in-game, this is <laughs> because of Tom oh, deciding he wanted to really, only deal with round numbers. Taking it from the wrong thing, sorry. <laughs> Bear with me one second. Ugh. I guess even if that does happen, though, then we'd have, like, cank honey, among other things. So, yeah, we'll probably be fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right, sorry. Right. I was taking off. 6.5 Yeah, there you go. All right, fine, 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 fine. Close enough. Uh, oh, actually, no, I need to well. Great, 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 great. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Good, 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 good. We've got so many rations, guys. Is it this early? Yeah. We it turns out it's like it's so heavy. You're like, oh. Um, yeah, uh, Marcia, did you want to roll the next encounter? Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, great. Okay, so the next day will begin, and if it's 1.5, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, um, it's like 4 hexes, so yeah, it'll be um, on, the thir on the third evening. Uh, on the road, I oh, know, so you're, you're halfway through that hex because of where you come out, so that'll be uh, one, three point five. Uh, early on the third day of travel. Okay, B, uh, J, do you want to roll an encounter? Road encounter. Three. Great. So that will put you in this hex if your token wants to move. Great. People want to do their nighttime checks and we'll do our nighttime encounter. Uh, 
yeah, okay, so roll your... Roll so, your water save. Uh, heat protection, water finding. 20, that's a fail. Yep, fail over here. Uh, <laughs> I Makes it nice and easy to work out, doesn't it? I succeed on my heat protection. What about water find? I fail on that. Okay. So, take some of that. Five, all six, six, two, six, two. All right, take that down to 48. And I'm going to take that down to 60. Right, good, done. Sorry, just working out something. Uh, great, and then it's going to be um, Tom for that nighttime check, isn't it? Dice cam. Dice cam sponsored by Budweiser. Three. Three. Great. Okay, the next day, I guess we're back up at. Alex, so I just want to roll your party's encounter for, for the daytime, the road encounter. No. I rolled a five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're not allowed to say after you've rolled a one. You're like, oh, no, I think it was um, it's someone else's turn. <laughs> Great. Okay. Uh, you'll be... Actually, you'll technically be in the next square in Barlock, but we'll leave you there. Okay, everyone do their nighttime checks. Jay and Detection Alex, do your nighttime checks. <coughs> I uh, succeed on both. Oh, yeah, both. for the third time for me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> no, no, so d does Garrus actually have heat protection? Is this, <laughs> did, you, did you spend an NWP on it, or is this just like a... <laughs> He doesn't actually have it. Jay's just rolling dice and saying, that's a fail. He rolls a natural one. That's a fail. Yeah. Uh, no, Garrus is fine. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I know. <it> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, great. Okay. Time check is going to be Beach. We're so close, guys. We're so close. Boulette. Oh, <laughs> sorry, it's force of habit. Four. Nothing. <laughs> Four. Uh, I might actually need to, I'm actually uploading a map of Barlick now because, you know, you might get a... <laughs> By which you mean you're building but Barlick Jay, in your, you can, in your you allotment. You can ruin that all. Encounter check. Yeah, yeah, at a one to one scale. <laughs> yep, encounter check. Wow. I've got to mm -hmm. change the music now. I haven't had to change the music for well, I guess, no, I say that. The, I, I, the, I had different music the whole um, can, canyon, didn't we? Okay, what should we, what should we go for? Is that like shh. there we go. That might be a good one. this one instead uh okay whilst that's starting let's get a map of barlick up for you i guess Ooh. this has so far been the opposite of the um the spelljammer campaign which was all in a city this is this is the first time we've actually been in a city yeah
Now we face the true menace of Dark Sun. Other people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you thought the bullets were bad. Wait until you meet the uh, the merchants. <laughs> the drivers. <laughs> the, the, the true danger in Dark Sun. Society. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we specifically... Society is to blame. We specifically don't live in a society. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we intentionally don't. Uh, this map is actually a some person on at the Dark Sun World Anvil, who I will try to get credit for. But there we go. I should... Uh... Cool. Very hmm? cool. Oh, I've, got, I've got those frost giants from Planescape. Oh, maybe I should put them on the map. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. So we should uh, get road yeah, just getting the party token. So this this city has a harbour, a dusty, dusty harbour, a silt <laughs> a silt harbour, yeah, a silt oh. harbour, yeah. I suppose that yeah. works. You are coming on that western road through the Great Gate, and uh, as you get closer to it, you do increasingly see uh, there there are herdsmen out with their uh, erdlu and um, and think and animals like that. Uh, there's, um, you know, fields. It becomes agrarian as we get closer. Uh, you're into a fertile area, and uh, uh, yeah, you can tell this is this is not like the uh, the waste through which you travelled. It's not it's not as obviously verdant as the canyon. But then the canyon was untouched. This is yeah, this is hot and dusty. There's not loads. Of, there's not surface water apart from um, sheltered irrigation canals. Uh, in a few places, you know, where, uh, but uh, uh, it's still very green compared to the rocky wastes through which you've been travelling. And yeah, you can see as you come toward the gate, uh, you, you, you'll have this this map. You can probably literally just this is the map that you were given by uh, Master Sisra. Um, yeah, you can you can see there are mountains, green mountains, so a great palace on one of them. Uh, there are large villas uh, that you can see over the walls to your south. There's a stream of humanity and uh, and half elfanity, uh, and, and and maybe a few few mules as well, uh, mules and giant, half giants. They they are they seem to be mostly operating as guards coming in and out of the the gate, uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, the the walls are what probably. At uh, 20 feet tall or so, 25 feet tall. They're pretty big walls, um, and uh, you can see uh, soldiers atop them, uh, large pieces of uh, artillery, big ballistae, things like that. Um, there are uh, stalls along the ro along the wayside here. Uh, if, uh, if anyone's looking to, uh, I don't know, buy random knickknacks or water um, or like the uh, snacks and things, uh, as pe uh, people are hawking their food to you. Uh, as you come in, uh, um, yes. Did you uh, uh, did you happen to coin the term elf manatee just now? <laughs> half elf, half half elf um, uh, uh, The serious question is: do, Would Marcia know anything about the source of the water here? Is it natural? Like, is there a river or a spring, or is this like the the great lord just? There's uh, I'm No, it's uh it's it's artesian wells, at least in part. Okay. Certainly the sorcerer kings are keen to link themselves with the land's fertility, where sorcerer kings live, the land is fertile, ipso mm -hmm. facto. Uh, but uh, uh certainly for, for some that's more important than others. So um Lalali Pui, who's the Oba, the sorcerer king of Gulg, it's a major part of her identity, a major part of her thing that she is connected to the the lands because that's that's a kind of forest-based city that you know but whereas say Nibane or probably Andropolis don't don't really talk about it in quite the same terms uh, Andropolis is more keen on the idea that Barlek is at uh, the center of trade and free expression and liberty 
in 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 the tier region. You know, it's uh, everyone has a chance to be a Templar. There are elections for Templars. Um, in fact, even Andropinus himself was was elected um, a thousand years ago. <laughs> it's a lifetime term, you understand. <laughs> it's reminiscent of one man, one vote. The patrician yeah. was the man, and he had the vote. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Simon. Welcome, uh, our, uh, uh, as we say, Ben TC, our fire cleric. Uh, evening. Apologies for my lateness. Yeah. At least, it, well, don't tell us it wasn't Pathfinder this time, though. No, no, it wasn't. I was going to see some friends. And also, when you're That's playing... That's even worse. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought I'd be back a bit earlier than I was. <laughs> um, but it does mean my don't character's not it. dead yet, because <laughs> if I'm not here, I cannot die. Oh, as if I am here. <laughs> Try it. Try it. Try it. <laughs> I may not live very long while I'm here. Man. Yeah. No, the party has successfully arrived at, at Barlick. Um, a city. Through a fairly gentle... Yeah, a city. A, fa a fairly gentle set of um, encounter checks, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they were... I mean, yeah, you should... On average, you should have gotten one, shouldn't you? Because it was like seven checks or something. Um, but, uh, yeah. May maybe you've used up your allotment of bad luck with that boulette. I guess. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, but yeah, uh, any other questions or thoughts? I mean, as I say, you're outside the gate for now. Uh, Traders going through it. What does the cityscape look like if you've not described it? It looks like uh, the map. I think so. Screen. Yeah, there are. Your... <laughs> Uh, it, this is, I like to think this is what Gargi says to Ben Tusi. Look at the map, moron. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it doesn't have a uh, cart uh, the... I can see there's a big um, sort of building yeah. in the middle, and it's got um, some sort of port, although it's got at the sand. It's a silk port. Silk yep, port. it's a silk port. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, you can see. There's kind of 24, 25 foot walls or whatever with troops and artillery on them. Um, there's your in its fields. There's no surface water, uh, but uh, there are some covered irrigation uh, canals. Uh, but uh, so it's 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 not actually as verdant as the canyon, but it's kind of so far in our game, it's the second most verdant thing you've seen. And probably for Ben Tusi particularly, who's a wilderness guy, this is very very green. Uh, and very very populated. There are a lot of people, real stream of people coming inside and outside. Um, the, uh, yeah, you can see, uh, the guards, um, at the gate have, uh, yeah, like long spears, 12 foot long spears, uh, which are, uh, yeah, um, tipped in, uh, in obsidian and they have, um, unsheathed daggers at their sides, which, uh, look like, sh like they're the size of the thigh bone of an nerdly. They're enormous daggers. Uh, on the top in the center here, you can see... There is a city, a, a, a palace of white marble um, in the highest uh, highest point there on that ridge. And there are ha la many large houses further down. Um, the greenery here do doesn't look uh, like fields. It doesn't look agricultural. You know, there's uh, you can see it from here. There are, there's just open greenery, uh, which as a show of wealth is only second to water. And there's a big mountain here, Mount Laren. Uh, the, uh, the Agora, the, yeah, indeed, uh, you, you can see on your map, the Agora, the, the marketplace is just to the southeast of the, um, the palace. Um, you do see a lot of olive orchards actually as you come in as well. Uh, at some point while we're here. My, the third character of my tree will will join us. Just slip in amongst the baggage train. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, perhaps, uh, yeah. Uh, he's been here the whole time. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, well, is this a trader? Or... No, it's very much not a trader. No. No. <laughs> Is it the opposite of a trader? <laughs> I'm trying to work out what that means. Um, but yeah, uh, but yes, you can you can obviously pick up friends and allies of Andrus Sisra here. Uh, if you you know if you're coming in with new characters on your tree, they can be connected to House Sisra as well. Um, the 
uh, a place where you can get uh, accommodation uh, for as a merchant house is up at the north in the Gilders precinct. Which you can see there at the top. Uh, but yes, uh, I guess, are you planning to enter then? No, yeah, let's just go home. This sale for, right, let, let's sell everything first and then we can do all of our other stuff. Yeah, it's early enough in the day that you could. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, as um, a merchant wagon, you'll be levied for um, uh, your yeah entry. What what's what va what's well what's your declared value or apparent value of the goods you've got? Uh, are we going to? I don't know. We resist and fight them to the death. We won't pay tax. Um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, don't... <laughs> give me liberty or give me death, and by that I mean it's give me death. All taxation is theft. We don't really know. Like it, this, our trader is dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kent prove it. Picks up uh, Sadira's um, husk husk of a of a corpse to show everyone. Uh. I don't know Wait. if anyone now has a a backup uh, got a get backup trader yet or not, but um... <laughs> that sounds like a no. I just don't know where we did we keep track nope. of the value of all the stuff, or we just have we just have a list of all the stuff. Tom, yeah. Tom should have the value of stuff. Uh, I do not have the value of stuff. <laughs> 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 I did not. Right, well, that well, was the thing I was writing down. <laughs> Wait, where's, where's where's the caravan sheet? We'll, we'll we'll all chip in. Get this sorted. <laughs> the, the 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 guards look at each other and they're like, "So you say you're you're merchants? That's your purpose for being here? Are you Our sure you're merchants? We're Our a merchant, merchant caravan. None Kent of us says, claim to be he's dead. Yeah, we were all the <laughs> escorts of the merchant. At, Clearly, we didn't do a good job keeping our merchant alive. At, <laughs> Yeah, one of them turns around and uh, calls. Uh, Could you get the inspector in here? As well, I want to, uh, the, it, right, I want to approach them and say, "Shade dwellers, we are not of these city-like <laughs> places where the shade hangs long. We are of the sun. Our goods <laughs> they cannot be valued um, so, so in such trivial ways. Everything <laughs> is done by barter. Sentimental value." <laughs> Our iron chain. One of them the like pull, pulls up the canvas on top of the iron chain. It's like, I think iron chain can be sold. I think it can be sold for a lot of money. He <laughs> says to, to uh, Ben. To but you. only iron chain is only worth money within the gates. Outside here, where we are discussing its value, it has none. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he is like, okay, short stuff. And, and then Marcia uh, says, "You'll wait for the inspector." And pulls the canvas back down. Where? Yeah, what? yeah. Uh, where is the the sheet for the the caravan? Uh, I mean, I, 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 I have I, it pulled up on Google Sheets right now. Um, yeah, but I would, have, is is the is the link not in the in the Discord somewhere? I, I just had it saved under drop my drop it in the game uh, documents. Yeah, I'll drop it in. Hold on. Yeah, this is where. <laughs> It didn't copy. Hold on. Uh, as as you completely fum as you continue to fumble trying to find their manifest for your <laughs> your trade <laughs> caravan, um, that coming out uh, wearing a uh, crested helm like a with a um, a sort of body molded breastplate with a helm with a uh, red crest on top of it, um, wearing a um, a short sword in a in a. Um, uh, there we are. Uh, a short sword and a sheath. Uh, a, a, a tall human steps out with an aquiline nose, uh, uh, clean shaven, jutting chin, and uh, uh, says, uh, Ah, what appears to be the problem here? And uh, looks around, and the, so the soldier, the guard, uh, says, uh, They uh, don't have a manifest, don't have a price for what they're selling. Um, the dwarf starts talking about barter. For, uh, for those who are the, watching on the, stream, we truly are a good representation <laughs> of the app player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, you, you spent your Dark Sun game becoming good at playing d d if good at playing <laughs> d d means walking around incredibly lethal environments, fighting horrendous monsters. But, <laughs> but bureaucracy, on the other hand... <laughs> Is a step too far. Does we, anyone have bureaucracy have, I mean, as an NWP? I've been keeping track of the rations and things. There's a lot. There's a lot to keep track of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tom, Tom's very keen to tell everyone it's not his fault. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at the thing. Uh, it doesn't look like we have too much. Uh, we... I, think the bo- I think the bottles of alcohol, right? They were like really fancy, and the chain is probably like the biggest. And then there's all the that stuff that um, Mele me, 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 me. Yeah, me, me had a chest full of stuff. Me, me. Two pounds of obsidian, two pounds of coal, ten pounds of common spices, one pound of exotic spices, eleven pounds of rice, three pounds of sugar, twenty pounds of salt, two gallons of cooking oil. <gasps> The chains, a turntable, the bottles, a golden statue, that little box we found in the, uh, the cave, and, well, the Erdlu carcass, but we've already got uh, To answer your question, no, I have no useful NWPs for city life. To yeah. any of us? Herbalism is not useful in the city, which is what I have. Uh, let's see. Cool. I can dance. Uh, yeah, the in- inspector begins to... <laughs> Garris does a distracting dance to try to, uh, uh, yeah, but we're, we're not, save we're the party. Uh, the... We're, 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 we're cooperating. We just don't happen to have like a, a well-organized movement. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're cooperating, we're just idiots. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not hiding. Anything. We're literal <laughs> like country bumpkins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We're more explorers. Who here is actually, I guess, some of you must have been in a city before. Some of you must have been in a city before, so... Right? <laughs> right? G- Gargi is the only one who definitely hasn't. Yeah, I think Garrus has. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, now you're in a city, by the way, you've just also technically cached the, uh, all of your uh, treasure in, haven't you? Removed it from the dungeon and re- returned it to a settlement. Um... So, yeah, that is quite a lot of XP. Uh, you do have a gold statue of an old bearded man, which the inspector will, like, will point at and say, uh, is this a trade good? Looks rather valuable. <laughs> That's a personal idol. <laughs> uh, he he kind of looks, he's like, uh, I see. Um, uh, he, he starts to tot up stuff, I guess, based on the manifest. What, what things are you declaring as trade goods? Uh, all of Meeb's stuff and then the chain Boys. yeah um the alcohol what else have we actually got on here the alcohol well, i was I, selling like you did you give some alcohol to the dwarf do you gave some alcohol to the dwarves didn't you was it the dwarves or was uh, it the, the elves. yeah we gave them something Tarry. did they take oh yeah them? oh to the elves yeah we did we give them there was two kinds of alcohol i think we gave them one yes of the kinds of alcohol one for cheap ones yeah um uh, yeah, because they gave they were gonna give us absolutely loads of food for it, weren't they? It was like it was yeah, yeah, great, so. <laughs> like more food than yeah, yeah. we could carry. Why have we got a turntable on here? Not like a DJ deck. Like a <laughs> it's a table it's a T E R N E table. It's oh. a yeah, it's well, a metal not, table. I did not write it like that. <laughs> I imagine that is tra- I imagine that's for traders. I imagine that's for trade as well. It is. Yeah, <laughs> you can keep it. I don't care. Uh, yeah, I think it. What is this box from uh, Waterfall Cave? There you have a uh, a a silver metal box, very tough, very strong metal. So it's not silver; it's not the metal silver; it's silver coloured. That is locked. Oh, is that the one we got from the Waterfall Cave? Is that what this box from Waterfall yes. Cave is? Right. So I guess we'll probably yeah. get that picked rather than. Um, just selling it. Yeah. Or maybe we could just, like, sell it for a ludicrous price, you know? It's a mysterious locked box that we found. It could be anything inside it. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> What's Trade in the box? In box. What's in the box? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
What show, what show, obviously I've made the seven reference. What is the what what trade it in for the box reference? Is that the Simpsons? Simpsons That's Sim yeah. Simpsons, yeah. <laughs> Could even be a boat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Okay. Um uh, he, he'll it, so in that case, I guess uh let's have a look. Uh is the goods master's trade goods sorry mate moobs trade goods are only be worth a small amount aren't they yeah they're, they're, um, they're worth a, probably a few silver maybe um yeah i'm, I'm just it's I think probably, we, it's probably were... more time that it's worth to go through them yeah Four the rusted chain is worth five thousand seven hundred uh, um five thousand seven hundred for the chain is the is the total value uh, face value, uh, and was it the you thought you gave away some of the czar possibly you gave you had twelve bottles of czar which you gave away possibly and then kept five bottles of emerald sun, I mean he won't know what they're necessarily worth um, other than like what he thinks so yeah I guess twenty each that'd be one hundred five eight hundred, um, so wait sorry and the, the bottles. did you say uh, no it's like one hundred for the it's like one hundred for the bottles. Uh, the table is 150, so that's 5,950. Uh, you actually have three gold pieces, but I assume you're just going to keep those as cash rather than attempt to sell them <laughs> as gold. Yeah. 5,950. Uh, let's call it six. Uh, okay, um, you'll be levied 60 CP. Uh and he, he will uh, want to waver. Can anyone read or write? Otherwise, only take a mark. But that the statue and the jewelry you have is not for sale. Uh, Garki can read halfling. <laughs> <laughs> Are you all illiterate as well? Is this really the trading party you want? <laughs> <laughs> is, is this better or worse than the, the party of feet? This is where we want the party of feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he's got sixteen. If you've got so int nine or above, you can reckon. Yeah, if you've got int nine or above, you you can you count as recognizing simple signs and things like that. Well, I've got int sixteen, in, so I'm assuming I've got. Text. So I'm literate. You're not. You're not literate because you don't have reading writing. Um, um but you'll be semi literate. You'll be able to understand simple signs. You know, like basically stop things like that. All right. Well, I'll, I'll Kent will leave a mark then. Who's got sixty copper to pay the man? Um. Well, that's a real ceramic. question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I I do. Nice Gagi Gar does somehow. Uh, he will also say there is a there's a ten CP fee for him having done the inspection because uh, wow. you did not have a valuation of your own. Do you still have? Enough? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So oh, I've got ninety. Oh, I guess I didn't really. Seventy CV. Yeah, I, d I didn't really um, have much equipment at the start. So yeah, I'll I'll pay that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Did, I, did he say we can't sell the statue? Mm. Well, I um, did we not want to sell the statue? If did you're declaring that it is not. Oh, is that um, what we're doing? We're saying we're not. I don't know. I asked him. It, that was not on the list of things you mentioned. I mean, you called that an idol. But if you want to sell it, yeah, I was mostly just trying to get out having to pay for it. Um, yeah, it makes no odds to me as whether we sell it. Yeah, or not. I think we should sell it. <laughs> I don't know if we can hide it. It's a pretty. It's not a small thing. Yeah. I mean, if we want to get out of selling it, the key or get, getting billed for it at the gate, the key thing is to sort of put it on a podium and sort of make it look like it's really valuable to us. Yeah, but then if we try and sell it to somebody and get caught. Oh, it's, it's a big city. Like, it's, it's a it's a very um, it's a very uh, distinctive statue, though, is the worry. Yeah, also, well, mind you, Marcy is a thief. Maybe we <laughs> basically find it's Monk help us Giazzo. It it's like it's like, like Monk Giazzo from um, Avatar. Yeah, uh, he would uh, he'd value it at a thousand cop uh, ceramic, so it'd be another ten ceramic. Oh, you... that's that's worth. Uh, he, he he 
he, uh, he he will smile thinly, of course, and say, and say something like, uh, uh, you understand, of course, uh, anything that is not declared for sale that is found to have been sold in the Agora or via private se- uh, private sale um, will, uh, the, the full force of the, the law of this city comes down on. We're very serious about trade. Trade is based on predictability and honesty. Uh, we don't accept dishonest traders here. I thought this was a corrupt city state. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. We're not dishonest. We're just incompetent. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, no, he he'll take the extra ten and add it onto your list. Yeah, I guess I pay um, an extra ten. Uh, you know, that's that's almost my entire wallet gone. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not like Gargi uh, needs much great. money. Yeah, I mean, what, what's Gargi spend, spending money on? It, it, clearly, halflings are an enlightened civilization, but don't actually need money. I, don't know. Have I, I, I get. Yeah, I was going to say they trade using human skulls. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we should. I guess you should travel. Let's continue traveling through the city. Then now you've paid. Um, yeah, uh, the uh, uh, the inspector gives you a farewell. You know, gives you a, a valet with and a hair and dropness, and um, returns to his post in the in the gatehouse. As you're allowed to come through onto the road of legions through the arena precinct, uh, you see rising up because of the route you're going to need to take. Uh, you you or you'd naturally take. You'll actually go by the the. Uh, the Criterion, the great uh, theatre, Colosseum, and Hippodrome at the foot of the Mount of the uh, Megalonanon. Um, so yeah, the two uh, the two gladiators will see uh, this great Colosseum ahead of them. I don't know if either of them has fought in Barlick before, but... Uh... I think, yeah, Kent's from Barlick, I believe. Yeah. So no, Kent will certainly recognise it. Um, uh, does Garrus have a particular origin, or is he uh, still somewhat undetermined? He is a um, well. Let's uh, let's say um, for all uh, that all the party know is um, he, uh, he he's well experienced in fighting. <laughs> Mysterious. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't like questions about his past. Which is strange because he's quite young. <laughs> hmm. Actually, as we walk past the drone, uh, Kent, uh, Kent wants listens to see if he can hear cheering. Anything happening? He might, you know, have a look in there later, see if he can further his desire to free some gladiators. Oh yes, I was, I, was, I was actually saying earlier. I don't think you were, you weren't here yet. Uh, no, you was you were here. Who, who was it? The other, yeah, it was the others who weren't here. Um, yeah, Gargi's also like not city person. Wants slaves free, so that's probably a thing we'll end up doing at some point. Mm. Uh, might be. Yeah. But first. Dollar. First, m- money. <laughs> some some things are important. How not expensive the trade goods are. Yeah, a lot of them are just like. Well, I guess if you're going trade goods, it'd be you know pick them up from places where they're cheap and sell them where they're expensive. Yeah. So you'd buy, you buy you know. Great, does it like? You, you, where you buy hundreds of pounds of something for yeah. a half the price and then sell it off for double the price. Yeah. Well, we do not have. That much capacity for now. <laughs> yeah, but imagine you've got you know twelve tanks. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Obviously, obviously. M- m- money makes money, or whatever. Absolutely. That's how you do. Uh, it. Step one: uh, be rich already. Step two: do absolutely <laughs> nothing. Step three: profit. <laughs> yeah, get get someone else to do the hard work for you. Uh, Tom, did you also still have the cloth? 
No, we gave the cloth to um, the elves. Was that to the elves as well? Yeah. 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 Great. Uh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we are on uh, Kent. Tom, do you want to uh, roll the encounter as you... It'll be a d6 as you travel around um, to the north of... Oh, it's a one. The uh, Great Dictator's Palace. Mm. Uh, yeah, do you want to roll a d6? Another one. Uh, three. As in you'd won a second time. Three. Uh, so, yeah, you are uh, coming round uh, north, north um, through the harbour. You can see, uh, yeah, to your northeast, you can actually see a, a clear vista down to the harbour. Uh, to the great sailed silt ships. I guess Gargi, who has a little... Uh, Silt skateboard, <laughs> um, whatever. Surfer. Uh, it, yeah, uh, we'll be able to, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see these va vast versions of the thing he has. And, uh, yeah, as you turn south, and uh, now with the Megalending on, on your right, heading down to the Agora and coming into the market precinct, uh, you, um, see the road ahead of you, uh, is taken up. At the moment, by a uh, vast train um, of of people, there are a couple of half giants at the head. Uh, uh, make way for Senate, make way for Senator Castus, and uh, pushing people out of the way. Behind, you can see uh, various uh, guards and bearers. Um, there are f uh, lutists and other musicians. Uh, you can also uh, see. Um, at uh, where the crowd is on either side, there's they're scrambling for stuff on either side of this kind of passing group, uh, this passing uh, sort of train or whatever of people. Um, you can see that the the others on either side are scrambling on the floor. We should um, get out the way, especially since this party's you know short of an average. Um. <laughs> <laughs> liable to get stampeded we, yeah yeah let's back up <laughs> uh yeah as everyone uh backs up and um uh lets them uh pass through uh you um yeah you you realize as they're passing they <laughs> yeah uh, uh the, the reason people are scrambling is that uh um Beside the palanquin, which has a, has a curtain around it, there's this palanquin. Um, you can just see through the gauze um, a uh, a fat old man and a, and a young woman, both human. Um, and next to them, there are uh, carefully guarded and watched by uh, some of the guards of this on this um, uh, route. Uh, there are servants uh, throwing copper um, into the gutters. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can see people scrambling uh, for ceramic, sorry, not copper, uh, for the ceramic pieces uh, falling on the floor. Um, occasionally a small bit of metal glints out as well and scatters around. And uh, yeah, you, these guys uh, call out, are, are, are calling out uh, uh, to, um, uh, yes, to uh, uh, vo vo vote for um, the, uh, uh, the tribunes who support our good senator. Vote for the law and order slate. Uh, someone shouts out, uh, law and order, more like, and uh, before he's finished, a guard has come forward and smacked him in the face with the butt of his spear. Uh, yeah. You doing anything? You letting them part? You know, no, no action or? I don't even think I... we'll be here for the election, so I'm not sure, <laughs> not sure there's much we can. I mean, we could, you know, run forward and brawl with people to take, you know, ceramics out of the gutters. But I think, I think we're well off enough that our pride is worth more than that. I also think the issue is none of us are, none of us have any like 
etiquette or bureaucracy or anything that if we end up having to interact with any sort of city official, we'll be good at it. So we should probably just like <laughs> blend in, not stand out in any way. I can't get. Yeah, probably a good idea. Great. Um, okay, so you will arrive at the Agora. Uh, there's a few things, I guess, notable or worth observing about the Agora, uh, which is uh, that, yeah, there's lots of traders. It's very noisy. Uh, there are also um, various speakers around and, you know, bodies of people formed up to listen to them. And, uh, yeah, ge generally, you know, there's a lot of business, act business going on. Uh, there's lots of stalls. Uh, you can see facing onto the Agora, uh, there um, are very large, uh, you, you can see, uh, yeah, you also know to the south there is an elven market to the south uh, of the Agora. Um, on the Agora you can see, uh, particularly notable, are two large buildings with open spaces in front of them um, with, uh, uh, yeah, uh, various touts and guards. And uh, I guess Kent, with his very limited reading, We'll be able to spot that these are they're opposite each other these are the uh, uh, great headquarters or trading headquarters of houses wavir and tomblador uh, two of the great merchant houses of athos uh, and you can see um that uh, some some people are going in escorted uh, by uh, but you know by by flunkies and so on to take their orders and to uh, do large-scale business uh, most of the s sellers here are much smaller. Uh, Tomblador is uh, big in slave trading and has a few outpost villages. It's uh, it's less important nowadays than Wavir. Wavir is m maybe the richest merchant house, arguably, particularly in the south of the Tier region, trading in grain, ceramic, precious metals. I think. Um, yes, uh, there is. You, there is a place uh, to. If you want to set up a stall, uh, there is a, a city, a praetor, um, and it, so a templar, basically, like the inspector you met. Actually, there is a uh, a kind of office for the praetor where you can hire a spot, uh, or you can just try to sell it direct to someone like Tombador or Wavir or someone else. So, we'd make. The fastest sale would be to sell it to one of the big houses because they'd have the money to just buy it immediately, but they'll not give us the best price for it. The best money would probably be to sell it directly to uh, to someone who wants metal, but that might take mm -hmm. time. Is um, it like an armorer's district or something like that? I mean, the market, the market precinct has lots of shops in it as well as houses. Uh, the um, the Gilders precinct, I guess, as well, might do. I think metal is likely um, rare enough that there's not many people who buy it. So it might be worth perhaps try and go for like a maybe a smaller house. It might give us a better price. Um, but it might be hard to find a small house that can afford to buy all the chains. So. You'd think that, like, that, you, well, I guess that is worth quite a lot. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, its face value is probably 5,700, like I said. But you'd think that any sort of trading house that maintains a premises in Barlick probably does trade in that sort of volume. Because mm -hmm. although the chain mm -hmm. is very valuable, like, there's not loads and loads of it mm. whereas you know they might sell thousands of pounds of flour every month or whatever mm. true if we had a trader i would feel more confident in saying let's go and bargain with somebody um but yeah i do not have i do not have but did Cicero give us the name of anyone he has a relationship with in Balak already? Like, he must have known someone here. Uh, 
So, uh, I, he's, he sort of says, but remember, he wasn't the trader. This is the whole thing that kind of went wrong was that uh, he um, he was the kind of lead fighter uh, in it. But when, when after the betrayal and the kind of collapse uh, that happened, he doesn't have very many contacts. Uh, he uh, may know someone. Let's have a check. Like a Perry Maguire situation. He didn't, he didn't walk away with all the clients. Yeah. No. <clears throat> uh. Yep. Yeah, so uh, he does know the headquarter, the head head of house Wavir in Barlake, not the head of house Wavir as a whole, but um, Falmon Duro, who's a male half-elf. He doesn't know him well. They have literally made deals before. Let's go up to the, let's just go right up to the Sorcerer King's Palace and be like, hey, we got a cool statue for you. That'd be a great hey, good way to make friends, giving the uh, the Sorcerer King stuff. Well, I didn't say give. <laughs> you said anything about <laughs> like giving. Yeah, unfortunately, Marcy is super unhelpful in this situation. Uh, and probably has very little idea of what it's even... Is it like, why don't we just... We can't just point at all the people with like stalls. Like, can't you just, I don't know, sell things to all the people here? Isn't that how it works? Would it be a relief if uh, a black Mysterio jumped out and tried to kill you? No, but I bet a bullet would do a lot of damage in, in the city. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you bring a bullet? I bet they'd love to see a bullet fight in the arena. Let's let's not complicate things too much. Why don't we just let's just go to one of the more obvious places, you know, one of the bigger merchant houses and see what price they give us. Yeah, see what they'll give us for the chain. Is it worth considering yeah. the risk that they might just kill us and take the chain? I think that's unlikely in an established... Yeah, are we doing like a clandestine meeting? Somebody told us this was an honourable city full of fair traders. I don't think that's what they said. Oh, it's certainly not what they meant. <laughs> <laughs> I believe them. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I think, I think that, you know, the emphasis was on, you know, pay your taxes and if you want to bribe me, that's okay. Less, you know, people are nice here. Um, the shade dwellers are strange people. And you know, what if we go somewhere? They offer us a shit price, we leave, and then they 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 like mug us on the way out. You know, that'd be bad. Could get mugged in a straight line. Well. Is it yeah. worth trying to sell somebody a small amount, which would not be worth killing us for, seeing what kind of price we get for it, and then maybe coming back to sell a bigger deal? Like quality chain, that. Yeah, yeah. Give them one link of the chain. Yeah, I think taking like a link, of, <laughs> a, a few links of the chain, prove that we actually have some, yeah. and then and then just go to someone and be like, we've got some of this. What would you pay for? What would you pay per link? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Paper link. Yeah, that seems like fair enough. Are we able to break the length of this chain there? You have 570 pounds of it, I think, so. I guess you can take some and ask for a price per pound, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. 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 It's, it's also kind of yeah. to, to uh, safety. So, where are you get Safety, you know, so we don't have the whole place, the whole thing in yeah. one place. Yeah. Yeah. say? So I I almost dread to ask, but who who is your tra I mean I would say if you have any other PCs who uh, uh, you want to switch because that's one point you're in a different environment now I think it's fine if you're like you know this other person who is a contact of House Sisera I want the PCs if there's any PCs you want to switch to you can um, but uh, yeah 
uh, choose which PC is going forward, but then also who's going to go and do the negotiation and where are you going? I mean, Kent has no useful skills and has 13 charisma. How's everyone else looking? Um, Garki has no useful skills and has 8 charisma. Bentuzi has okay, good. Well, you no useful eight skills eight. and 10 charisma. Uh, after modifiers, because halfling. Yeah, fair. Mm, no useful skills, but being <laughs> charisma. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Well, Ga Gar Garris just is like, guys, I think I'm the face of the party. <laughs> yeah, I think Garris is the face of the party. <laughs> but how do you okay. roll 44 plus 4? And then with modifiers, get to eight. What What is what's uh, the Halflings person? get a negative to charisma, I'm pretty sure. Oh, do they? Sorry, my, my apologies. I had that backwards. Uh, Marcy has a 14 charisma. I don't know if that's high. Well volunteered. You but will no, negotiate but, on our behalf. Yeah, no, no useful skills. It sounds, so. like, it sounds like Gar 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 Garrus and Marcy are the... Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, does anyone I mean, have any characters on their trees who have skills? Yes, my backup character <laughs> is a Templar, but I feel like that's almost unfair to be like an, to be like an official of the city and be like, you will now buy our chain. Um, have any of my characters got social skills? I mean, I've got a dwarf gladiator, a half giant fighter. Oh, I have a bard. I have a bard. Oh, you're going to poison them if they don't give us a fair price? Well, I was thinking more just like, you know, walk up with, with my, like, mandolin or whatever and just be like, pay us money! <laughs> In a song of, of trade. Yeah. No, even better, you poison them before they even before we even do the offering, and then you say, I'll give you the antidote if you give us a good offer. <laughs> You've already been poisoned, sir. Uh, let's see, do I actually have... <laughs> offer, counter-offer. Uh, 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 my, uh, my, I, I've got some social skills in there, but they're not great. I've got bribery etiquette. Uh, what, what is mediation? Why have I got that? Oh, that's, that's when a uh, couple is splitting and they want to separate their assets fairly. <laughs> Very skilled at that. Um, uh, yeah, it's not the, uh... Obscure, but when it comes up, you'll be grateful. <laughs> Yeah, I guess if we, we, we encounter like two, <laughs> two groups of people about to start a war in the middle of the desert and I can negotiate Oh, oops, I did not fill in my Templars and WPs yet. Oh, so, Gargi, have, you yeah. literally had a whole quest about that. You literally had an entire adventure about, medi <laughs> about mediating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, if it happens again... Gargi's like, guys, I just realised I would have been really good in that situation. Oh, no. That's that's the, the the bard. The bard has has mediation, not not Gargi. Oh, the bard has it. Sorry, I was just thinking Gargi's there. Like, don't know what to say. <laughs> no, instead, instead, the bard who's actually really good at it just didn't participate in the whole thing and left us to do it. And then we find we're like, you were you were good at this, and you just yeah, left yeah. them to do it. Um, yeah. I was going to say if if you well, if you want the bard to swap in for Gargi, that's fine. Um, that makes sense. Uh. I guess that he can be the contact. He can be Cicera's kind of yeah, the one remaining kind of trade contact Cicera has. Like how Cicera's representative in Barlick, a guy who has access to a flop house. He's got like a room in a flop house <laughs> <laughs> on the company dime. Yeah, and uh, yeah, makes money on the side. Yeah, what's your bard called? Bardy, Bob, Bardy. <laughs> Bardy Mook Singer. Oh, Alex. <laughs> Alex has gone offline. We've bullied him into leaving at last. Uh, I thought <laughs> he's he was on a Discord. Man no name. He just sort of. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> so you 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 get try to get your face to come and meet you. You kind of send it, you know. And uh, while you're waiting, you just uh, it's ages. gargi has gone asleep. Um, so yeah, but, but I guess it's back to Garrus being the uh, face of the party. Um, where, where, where are you intending to send Garrus <laughs> to negotiate? Let's just awesome. go to one of the big, 
one the, let's go to one of the big shops, you know? We don't need to complicate it. Uh, the big three houses, uh, you've got Wavir and Tombladore, and then Reese, which doesn't have, um, doesn't front onto the Agora. Um, I think uh, Wavir trades in metals, in precious metals particularly, which would include iron, obviously, in this context. Wavir? Uh, as in... House Wavir, W-A-V-I-R. They trade in grain, ceramics, textiles, gulgan lumber, and precious metals. Aren't all metals House precious? Tomblador. Uh, no, not all metals in every context. They're, most metals are, are, are rare, but uh, yeah, rare, rare, there are very much rarer metals than others. House Tomblador, deal, um, big in the slave trade, amongst other things. I think they might have some other... Uh, while we're here, since he left us, let, we can just uh, uh, we can just sell Goggy to uh, Tombador. Oh no, he's back. Yeah, never mind. Goggy, you're being sold to House Tombador while you're here. We need extra money. Am I back? The deal's been struck. yeah. You're back. We can hear you. Brilliant. Right. Last thing I heard was so. <laughs> so, Alex, what's your bard called? Uh, my bard is called uh nasir nasir yeah do you wanna so nasir i guess will um pop I, I guess if you kind of yeah he's probably got a messenger waiting he's probably got some kind of urchin boy waiting to give him the message that the caravan has arrived <laughs> to come back to his filthy flop house or to uh, whether he's performing for pennies to yeah. tell him uh, but yeah what's what's nasir like as he comes to join the party um oh, i've not thought about this character at all since i rolled it up um, it's probably like that, that slightly, very clean, but in a kind of slightly slimy way, like a little bit, a little bit used salesman, used car salesman, um, <laughs> uh, you know, like, like very shiny clothes, but then you look a little closer and they're a little bit, you know, shiny because they're, 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 they're very well worn. Um, yeah, he's got yeah, a, yeah. a big bright smile and he, he you know, looks, looks rather charming, um. And, and, and then you realize, oh wait, no, he's a, he's a bit, you know, not. Um, he's got this. Um, doesn't doesn't really look like he's got any weapons on him. Uh, got this um, this uh, big old tambour strung over his back. Um, yeah, <laughs> does he just play the song Yub Nub by the Ewoks? <laughs> I just like I'd... beating his tambour. <laughs> I, I don't know that. Is, 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 which one's is that? <laughs> what? I, I, I'm Googling it. <laughs> Do, this is thing. This is a crime, by the way. Yubnub is not at the end of the special edition. This is why Alex doesn't know it. Alex <laughs> has been corrupted since they changed the sacred texts. <laughs> the, the archives are incomplete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good reference. Uh, so... I guess, yeah, I guess Nasir and I guess Garrus are uh, on point if Garrus has the best uh, charisma of everyone else. I don't know. Depends who. But yeah, um, yeah, are you going to House Wavir then to sell metal? Is that the idea? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you'll be greeted, whoever is there, I mean, you can all be there, at the, um, at the great... Uh, the, the doors are um, gilt in bronze. They're brazen. Um, it's probably not an enormously thick uh, covering, but it's you know that it's expensive. It's bronze. It's, this is a sign of wealth uh, and a gleam in the sun. Um, reflect it, very reflective. You can see that there are embossed patterns on them. And uh, there are guards, half-giant guards uh, and mule guards uh, around. <clears throat> uh, and uh, coming forward uh, with, uh, uh, with a couple of um, slaves carrying parasols, uh, is a bearded, goateed uh, human uh, with kind of oiled goatee and uh, moustache um, who uh, bows his head and uh, uh, looks, you know, uh, looks at you. And um, he's not quite sure. He uh, says, uh, oh, uh, hello, um, friends. Uh, welcome to the uh, the Emporium of House Wavir. Uh, are you buying or selling? And he's kind of obviously looking amongst this travel-stained mob <laughs> led by a 
um, led by led by a semi figure, but uh, he's he's not sure. Led by a sleazy, <laughs> yeah, used car a sleazy, lounge, yeah. A sleazy lounge singer, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who basically has those things. What are they even called? Like the gigantic kind of balloon people from used car sales. Like he's oh, got I, a couple of those. No, oh, wacky, wacky inflatable arm man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, basically Nasir's shtick, isn't it? He actually sets it up wherever he goes. Um, <laughs> just right now. Yeah. So yeah, I guess Nasir or Garrus, what are you? What are you saying? Oh. Well, go ahead. Let's uh, let's butter them up first. Um... <laughs> We, we we come to the you know the greatest and the greatest the mightiest the mightiest and the, the the richest trading house around the only people who could afford our our incredible goods uh, and truly have we got something special for you today my uh, my compatriots here uh, servants of the uh, the uh, the embarrassed house Cicero, uh have have uh, trawled the deserts and come back with a, a true treasure trove uh, just for your uh, benefit I suppose. Uh, much much profit to be made here on on both of the house. That's good. <laughs> Gar Gar Garrus, who, so there's this like slimy guy up front, and then Garrus is just the kind of handsome, fit uh, gladiator <laughs> behind him. He makes it like, yeah, <laughs> nodding along. Uh, yeah, well, I I don't think we established any. Jay, how old is Garrus? Given you're like, oh, he's quite young. Is he like twelve or something? No, no. So he's. Um... <laughs> Well, he's, he's 20, which, uh... Yeah. Probably not really all that young on Duck, on, on Athos. Maybe, maybe in, yeah, maybe in Athos, <laughs> that's not that young, but I think of him as He's still... late middle age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. No, uh, the, uh, the guy looks, so uh, what's, what, what, who has the high charisma modifier out of the two of you? Garrus has 15. Uh, what do you have? Nasir also has 15. Ah, okay, same. The different kinds of charm. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, reaction adjustment plus three. Yeah, that's decent. Uh, let's check your what your reaction roll is. As I've I've made the roll, let's go and find out what it gets you. Uh, he is, he kind of takes a moment to then uh, cautiously smiles. His eyes don't quite meet the smile. He says. Ah, uh, Sisra, Sisra. I believe I heard it. Didn't they go defunct? Well, I mean, obviously, sorry. I do not mean to be rude if you if you say you represent Sit House Sisra very well. Um, and says, well, uh, is, do you have your samples with you? Yes, yes. Here and, and, and um, yeah. uh, Nat Nathiel beckon whoever's carrying the um, whatever chain links we brought. Yeah. Have, have we uh, left the caravan uh, yeah. somewhere else whilst we're doing this or you say like someone else watching it outside know. perhaps <laughs> you know, if, if the whole point is to well, not I was gonna say, you've got you've got apart really. from you and garris you do have you i guess you have well whoever people are playing but you have marcia bentusi kent and zedrick or whoever people are swapping to if needs be yeah so i imagine there's um, like probably one more person with us in case things do go bad I and mean, then everybody else watching yeah. the caravan maybe you know, down the street or something. I was going to say, if, if Beach has a B Balikian Praetor as his character, is that is your Templar from Barlick Beach? Uh, but if so, then I guess that that that's probably reasonable security, isn't it? Yeah, I think at the time when I made it, I I, I made it back before we left Sisera. Um, I thought it just made sense because it would be the closest city that would care about anything happening around where Cicero was going on, so I felt like yeah. the most possible place for uh, a Templar to like actually latch yeah. onto the caravan and come out and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, uh, possibly a, a corrupt contact of, uh, well, corrupt, I mean, is it corrupt to take bribes? Not really. Uh, <laughs> that's that. That's the uh, Barlick way. Um, that's just commerce, baby. But, uh, yeah. 
but yeah, I, it possibly a contact of Nasir's, like the uh, reason Nasir is able to kind of turn a small profit on the kind of yeah, uh, the black market or grey market stuff he does <laughs> is he's friends with the Praetor. Uh, but yeah, you 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 have to wait for a time, but you'll eventually. This is as in Garrus and uh, and Nasir, you'll be introduced to, or you'll be taken through, uh, with your sample. Uh, to a male half elf, and the uh, the agent you initially met says, "Ah, um, a rare honour for you, uh, I, uh, Master Falmon asked uh, to to meet you and look at your samples himself." And he uh, shrugs as if. Um, and then he, you know, kind of as if he he's confused too, but he you know he still has this kind of permanent polite smile on. <laughs> and you're uh, brought through to a, a tall, slender half elf. In fact, his ears are fairly pointy. Uh, he looks very elven. Uh, he he's got grey eyes. He looks very serious. And um, uh, he is in a um, a uh, cool room with high windows in the middle of the, you know, several cor corridors into the compound. Uh, there, yeah, you, you pass down uh, carpeted corridors. Um, you hear other negotiations. You can hear the team from internal courtyards. There's fresh air coming, you know, much fresher than from the Agora, like coming through these, uh, f the fountains in these courtyards. And, uh, yeah, you're taken to this half-elf. And uh, he spreads his, his hands on... Um, uh, on a table uh, behind which he sits in a in a uh, wooden chair with um, gilt fixtures, and uh, he's lo spreads his long fingers out and uh, says, "I believed Sisera had dried out in the desert, uh, a dead lizard. You tell me he's alive." Certainly, certainly. Tempor temporarily embarrassed as I, uh, as I told your. Uh... He'll 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 say so. Who are you two? Uh, what what on what uh, in what capacity do you operate on behalf of Andrus Sisera? Uh, I I'm I'm simply Nasir, uh, a, a a man who knows cities better than the deserts and keeps an eye on the uh, the comings and goings of things. Uh, better to to advise him. Uh, offers offer a bow. Uh, a, 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 a pleasure and an honor. I suppose we're best thought of as contractors. Uh <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, he'll uh, he, he'll say well, when uh, when the seer says that he'll say we will find out if it's a pleasure or an honour, uh, and then to Garrus he uh, yeah he he uh, says, well you have a cent for coin at least. Uh, he says uh, well what what are these samples that that uh, um, that that old Inix uh, has had you pick up? Uh, uh, what what business is he in now? Kind of archaeology, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, the uh, other agent, kind of sitting back room, says, "Isn't that a skin complaint, sir?" And uh, Falmon looks up and kind of looks, stares daggers at him, and says, uh, "I've read the term in old texts uh, to to dig amongst the dead and uh, and take their goods. Am I correct?" Yes. <laughs> um, he says very. Yeah, he says very. very he says uh, sounds uh, potentially profitable. What do you have? As in, he'll ask for your samples. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, with with great flourish, um, um, Nasir will will you know pull pull out of like a sleeve or something and produce the uh, the chain link. Uh, not just this, a, um, a a great deal more of this. Um. I'm trying to think how uh, long it would be. Actually, just out, out, uh, yeah, out, out out of character. Is there anything else you're taking to show him? The alcohol, maybe, if we still got that. I, I I don't know if there's anything else. What would we show him? I think maybe one of the bottles of alcohol. And then tell him about the rest, like the the pounds of spice. Yeah, because yeah. he does do the the uh, uh, precious metal, right? So a gold idol would be so a description of of what we found. Yeah, 
and then maybe um and then just say like and some some common trade goods that um we um found abandoned on the on the road or something is probably the easiest story. <laughs> <laughs> we found upon the victim of a boulette. <laughs> yeah. No, he 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 he, uh, he nods and uh, as you put the as you I guess you show him the um kind of four links or whatever of rusted iron chain his eyes very slightly just perceptibly um widen slightly open slightly he, he uh, um says uh, may I inspect that? Of course, of course. Take the the links and wrap them on his head, and then he puts them to his his mouth. Um, he then uh, reaches into a he he, he ha- reaches into a drawer and uh, pulls out a small stone, which attaches itself to the iron. Um, like as and he puts it towards it, uh, uh, he 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 says, uh, "The uh, corpse of the old world has certainly showered wealth upon you this day, has it not?" Um, uh, he will say uh, he'll give you. So I'm trying to think. Uh, is it eight? Am I thinking? What's the what's the what's the conversion rate he's going to be offering you? He'll offer you eighty percent of value. Um, so if per pound that be it. He'll get off you eighty eighty ceramic, or sorry, eight eight ceramic per pound. Eight ceramic per pound. Eighty percent of the value per pound. Okay. And since we don't have a a, a, a trader, we can't really haggle that well. <laughs> I mean, eight. That's pretty good. Eighty percent. Pretty good. Yeah. That gives us. And then I guess. Sorry, I'm just seeing what that brings on. So, so yeah, I also can't help but give you eighty percent on it. That like, yeah, this is we got this stuff. Other than like the gold, the gold idol, we got this stuff from looting one building in our cult. Like, it's all from like one, just one spot. So, you know, yeah, I think there's a lot, deal. lot left to to lift out of there. That's a good point. And don't, he probably will gently ask, uh, you know, with yeah. yeah, he'll probably delicately or pointedly ask, you know, uh, and uh, I, I, without presuming you tell me where you have done your um, archaeology, uh, is, is there uh, likely to be more of this, or is this uh, what's the one-time deal? We hope to find more. How many people did we lose on the expedition? <laughs> In in our cold, we didn't uh, actually yeah. lose anyone. Did we? Yeah, no, we, we, yeah, we, we yeah. lost Sadira briefly, injured. then got her back, and then she died. <laughs> oh yeah, um, we had a few, a few people with uh, that. Did you take injured, six so. six casualties? Fifty percent casualty rate, I think, is the accurate answer. Yeah. Everyone's lost a character now, haven't they? Well, actually, except for yeah. Beach, I think. Yeah, Stu just barely lives. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, he'll uh, he'll he'll say, uh, well, if there is more of this, then certainly uh, House Wavir would be interested. I uh, certainly would counsel discretion, and perhaps uh, if there is more, um, depending on the volume you're talking about of metals, perhaps dealing at uh, our uh, satellite um, post at Al Tarak, which is to the northwest of Barlak. It's um, a vill- it's a village run by the three major houses of Barlak. Uh, but perhaps where well, away from prying eyes, this much metal, this much iron could uh, could gain interest. You see. Ooh. I see. So do we yeah. want to sell him the chains and the golden statue? Uh, see, see what what's the offer for statue? I guess if we tell tell him about it rather than show him, but yeah. you know, suggest we can. If you offer, if you if it's if it's essentially a one thousand gold item, then he will. Uh, off eight hundred. So he'll give us the same rate. On same the same rate, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, he'll give you the same rate. As a bit of an introductory offer, given that you're pro- 
promising him this metal. I think if you say you have five hundred and seventy pounds of the metal, he will um, be very willing to offer you the generous rate on the stuff that costs less. <laughs> say. Or that is less interesting. He, they don't trade the like stuff like the wine and stuff and the um, the random trade goods. Obviously, he doesn't care about me. He will literally just say yes. I'll give you this much money just to you know. Uh, is it perhaps worth keeping the cheaper ones for say bribery purposes or something? Wasn't the wine like ex like extremely like good when we tried it? Did someone drink it and it was like it was like exceptionally tasty? It wasn't actually a wine, was it? It was like a spirit or something. Yeah, it was, it was, and it was, it was really sort of alcohol. That was a spirit. Yeah. But it was didn't I, I can't remember if someone described yeah. it being like really really good. Could we drink it again to be sure? <laughs> In front of him. <laughs> Mm, I need so to decide so the price. After he's bought it from you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we sell him the bottle and not the contents? You know, given given <laughs> our random meetings with like the elves in the desert, it is useful to have some just like small trade goods on us that other people might be interested in. Yeah. I guess maybe we could get rid of like I'm just sort of thinking, like, is, is it worth the wait? As in, sorry, wait, like, E-I-G-H-T. Um, I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. It's, the chests are just the really heavy thing. <laughs> the chests are really heavy, and their contents are also really heavy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I could see the value in keeping some of this around. Could we maybe, like, do you think... Mm. Th so currently we have... Well, yeah, I'm just wondering, like, what the volume is of mm -hmm. these things. That's going to be really annoying to figure out. I guess probably it does need two large chests. chests like, two gallons of cooking oil is quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Well, we'll leave that. Let's, um, let's sell him the... Change the table and the golden statue. Is that alright with everyone? And then, like, all the yeah. cheap, cheap stuff left over from Meeb's trade stuff. Like, keep keep the chests, maybe, but still the contents. Oh, I thought we were saying we were keeping those trade goods around for bribery purposes. No, no, keep the wine for bribery purposes. Like, you're not going to bribe someone with, with 11 oh, pounds right. of rice, are okay. you? But you might bribe yes. someone with, okay. yes. with an alcohol that no one else in the world has, you know? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, in that case, yes, we will also sell him all the other stuff. How much is two gallons of cooking oil, Owen? <laughs> I've, I've got I've got them all written down, so it's like... Uh, what, what was they... Just top them yeah. up. Do you uh, have them, Alex? Do you have them sorted? I'd, I'd, I'd written down their totals. Uh, yeah. Oh, is it... Uh... Oh, I've... Right. I see why yeah, that's yeah, not going to work. Uh, um, so, just well, uh, assuming that's sorted, um, what else do you want to do in Barlick? What, what plan? Because you know, just for the remainder of the session, what should we? Why you can people can train? That not work. Is the command not some? It should be some brackets and then. Oh, okay, I put the colon in the wrong place, it didn't work. Uh, so it comes out, the, the, the normal stuff comes out at 47.3 ceramic. Okay. <laughs> literally literally not worth the time it took to, to, to figure it out. And really not worth carrying around, so I'd be to, like, <laughs> no. get rid, yeah. No. So, uh, so our total then is 6,700, 6,850, near enough. 6,850. 47. So, hang yep. on. 6,847 times... Times 0. 0. 0.8. 8, yeah. <laughs> 5,477 and 6 bits. <laughs> right. So, okay. Let's delete all these items. Boom. Yep. 
So what other jobs do you want to do while you're here? Um, well, I think first off, we have this locked box, and I'm now playing a bard, so I might as well see if I can open it. Um, yep, uh, you can do your pick locks. Yeah, I guess first I'd like That's to fine. see if the lock is trapped, or try and see if the lock is trapped, and then I'll try and uh, pick it. I have 5% fine traps, so... So, yeah, 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 so... <laughs> it's unlikely, but yeah, you nah. might as well. Yeah, might as well try. Uh, I, f I forget, it's fine traps I roll or you roll? Um, uh, fine traps, I think, is you roll. Oh. Nice. Uh, oh, close. Not close enough, but you know. And then I have, um, I have 30% on open locks. Hey! That succeeds. Yeah. Let's just hope it wasn't trapped. Inside. <laughs> it's not trapped! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, inside there is a boulette. Ah! Shit! <laughs> <laughs> How big was this box? <laughs> not again! Not again. <laughs> um, inside, uh, on, a vel on velvet cushions, there are two items. Um, one is, uh, there is a, uh, pale green gemstone with a white star in its center. Um, and the, uh, other, um, is, um, a, I get, I mean, it, it's, uh, I'm trying to think, not so automatically, um, recognizable, but some sort of like it looks like a bit of a dream catcher or something like a small, a small handheld dream catcher, uh, with um, bright, uh, like with beads hanging off it, with which are very bright, like they look like I don't know, stone or wax or something. These, these sound like magic items to me. The loot, the loot. Does anyone have? Detect magic, or Orizon can detect. Can Orizon detect magic? It can, can't it? On one thing, right? Um, uh, might be on one item, as yeah. opposed to like in a line or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's check the house rules. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I guess uh, Beach has a Templar who will have access to detect magic. Do Templars get? I don't know if anyone else does. No, I only have Arizon. Uh, uh, Temp, well, uh, is detect isn't detect magic uh, general? I don't know. Magic oh, sense, yeah. if there's a persistent spell or ma effect on magic item within 10 yards, they feel a recognizable tingle or sensation. No way to determine what item or spell may have caused the reaction. So certainly, you could get Ben Tusi to do that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to do that. So just take these two things and walk, you know, ten feet away from the rest of us. Well, I'd... We're in the um, merchant's tent right now, right? I, I assume we've left. You know, we've, you're, we've... yeah, you you can leave. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, okay. yeah, uh, but yeah. Is, is there like any area? Because obviously we're surrounded by buildings and things. Is there like a patch of ground maybe near the wall of the palace, mm. the bottom of the cliff, where I can walk out and be more than 10 metres or 10 bases from? Yeah, yeah, you could go there. The, the, the Agora does... Yeah, the Agora runs up there, so... Yeah. Okay. I'll walk out into a big open space and place the two items at my feet and then cast Detect Magic or Horizon actually, because that's what I've got, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so the there is a sense as in the direction you're facing, which is me looking at these items of magic. Okay, I pick them up and I walk back to the party. And I say, my magical senses are tingling. Brilliant. So one or <laughs> both of them is magical. We should claim both. <laughs> well, I assume we're going to hold on to them because... Magic items are rare and also hard to sell, I imagine, because 
that's bad, Juju. Um, <laughs> Can we pay to get them identified with the <laughs> huge boon of money that we have acquired? Is there a service that exists in the city? Considering that identifies an arcane spell, I'm going to assume not. <laughs> okay. Is magic outlawed? Hello, are there any wizards around? I mean, <laughs> I, technically, you know, it, it, it said, it said, it's rumoured that the Sorcerer Kings uh, tolerate yeah. certain private contractors. There's a Sorcerer King up no. that hill. We could go and ask him. <laughs> well, the, yeah. the issue, the issue uh, of Arcane Magic... wanting to, to do... In... The issue of Arcane Magic yeah, is that saying. it, Sorry, it yeah, just go for it. consumes everything around you, including, like, people's souls. I heard it does that. Like... A guy cast a spell once, yeah. and all the people near him Can just drop dead. Yeah, it's real. It's absolutely what happens. Okay. So, it was a, it was, a, like a, was it like a gemstone with a star on it, and this dream catcher? Yeah. So yeah. Yes. A green gem with star in it, like as in inside it. Ah. I guess we will maybe have a fiddle with those today to see what they can do. Mm hmm. Um. So, uh, yeah, uh, what do people want to do? What else needs to happen? I'm just going to buy some arrows. Other than that, just make sure we're supplied. I think Gargi had suggested buying like some seeds and stuff to give to the um the um oh, I forgot what they're called the Ratmen. The Arakokra? No. The the Arakokra are uh, carnivores, so they wouldn't care. But the Ratmen might. Was it you were thinking about buying? Was it grain you wanted to buy? I think specifically like seeds because they live in a fertile valley. Grain? Yeah, I guess like wheat, wheat seeds. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anyone have enough XP to level up? Because we could send them for training. Um, uh, you prob uh, some people probably will. So Marcia, Marcia, um, well, basically, uh, I need to uh, work it out because you've cashed in stuff. So, for instance, you you've got um, stuff that you hadn't cashed in before. Uh, that you've got the jade ring and the gold ring, um, and the uh, the little kind of charm gem and the dream catcher, and between them, they're almost certainly gonna. They might get everyone to level up. In fact, they'll certainly get Marcia too. Um, I think <laughs> they'll almost certainly get uh, yeah, Gargi and Garrus probably as well. Um, maybe Asher. Maybe Ben Tusi, maybe Kent. Is the, if, well, it, if anyone is at the point of leveling, then we should do the training to get them properly leveled. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but I yeah. don't know. Remember, when you train to level, when you train to level, you also uh, get a another. You level another character. Which is, so I think, partly about paying off the risk as well. Which is, you know, you lose characters a lot, but then you can make money back um, on f uh, leveling someone else for free, not having to pay training or get XP for them. Yeah. yeah that's level four, Steve. <laughs> so is well, I was going to say, well, for you, Steve is the person you least want to do that for, because Steve is already halfway towards a new level anyway. So. Um, sorry, what was, uh, what was, what, did Tom say something? I was just wondering if there's like an XP record, like is there a way for us to check if we've leveled up? Is, where's the, is, I don't see the... There is, there is an XP I record just, uh, in, um, in game documents. I was just out, yeah. Okay. I was just checking it out. Okay. I don't, I... Uh... Yeah, 
but I think I think it'll depend entirely on, you know, how much people get for all this stuff. Yeah, but definitely, um, mm. definitely, uh... I think we'll also need to buy some like provisions to take back to Fort Cicero, won't we? Because I think I think there were it was kind of running low on supplies there. Yeah, there needs to be there needs to be some cash for to pay people, and there needs to be some food. But um... I'm not sure um, <laughs> how 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 much of this money is actually ours, and how much of it. You know, does the sister actually? Well, it's, di it's, di it's, di it's discretionary. It's discretionary. You know, you're in charge, so. Ninety-five to five percent split. <laughs> <laughs> what in your in your your personal favour, Ben? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, so obviously. The fire cleric has brought the most value to this expedition so far. The sun has gazed down upon us each day. Looks like, yeah, Marcia is definitely there. Well, probably there. Her rogue. Wow, that's a valuable gem. <laughs> valuable gem. Mm. I actually, sorry, say. Because I technically probably need to calculate it. So it might be more. So yeah, certainly Marcia will do, and might that might, um, yeah. I mean, basically, a lot of other people are going to be like well over halfway towards it, but the loss of like I don't know, Gadair on four thousand, Sadir on five thousand five hundred, yeah. Bembo oh, on three thousand, yeah. Mave on three thousand stings. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. 
But hey, you got a bunch of uh, magic items now, so you need to work out what they do. Is there a soothsayer in the desert we can go see? <laughs> Do you can. I mean, you can just wear them. You can just try stuff. Just try stuff. Yeah. Okay. I will pick up the dream catcher. Ooh. And I will thread it around a string and put it around my neck. Yep. You do not die. I turn into... Yeah, yeah, indeed. I don't know. Okay. Um, well, that seems fine. Uh, it looks quite stylish, so um, I guess I'll keep it on. Maybe it makes me invulnerable mm -hmm. to weapons. Like a nightmare beast. <laughs> maybe to death. I, to death. To death. Yeah, it makes me, or maybe I can go out into the desert and um, what was that creature that attacked us that you mentioned earlier on? Um, Bullet. Bullet. Yeah, maybe I can summon bullets and ride them. <laughs> That's what I think it does. That's my theory. current working theory. Nice. Yes, but you have to find like the true, the true name of the bullet. Dream catcher of bullet summoning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's essentially a completely worthless magic item. Like incredibly powerful, but impossible to use. It's like nuclear weapons. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Anyone looking interested in anything else? No, I think I think maybe next session we'll go to the pits and have a look at some gladiator mm. stuff. And I guess we've got to retotal the XP to decide who's got enough for level. Although this might end up being in like six months' yeah. time or whatever if like, wasn't this going to be the last session of this arc? No, I think we'll, I was assuming we'll do, we'll do what, I assume we'll do one, one more, more Dark Soul one, 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 one to okay. do. Okay. Yeah. He's yeah. going to kill us all. We could do, we could do a session. session. <laughs> yeah, we've we got to have another TPK. Yeah. Um, got to say, welcome to Dark Sun to end. <laughs> Five <laughs> bullets! Ah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, Kent, is done any, uh, any of the other magic items going to any individual? Is I, d I don't know exactly how you're supposed to activate like a um, a uh, oh shit what are they called um, what are the stones that orbit around your head called iron stones iron stone yeah I don't know how you're supposed to activate those but if you do that like if you just like kind of take that that stone with a star in and throw it in an orbit around my head does it is it an iron stone? <laughs> Can I pick it up and chuck it at his head? Uh, you throw it. Yeah, you throw it. It drops to the floor. Okay. It does not break. Brilliant. Uh, stop throwing the gems. Uh, there's around. the two rings and there's this stone. Oh, we've got yeah, two rings. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, yeah. You... There's a jade ring and a silver ring. I think Kent's wearing the jade ring. Hmm, is he? I don't think I've been told that. Uh, uh, no, he's wearing the gold <laughs> ring. Sorry. Is there a gold ring? <laughs> uh, maybe. You said there was there was two rings, wasn't there's there? There's a gold. There is a gold ring. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, the the gold ring. Yeah. The gold ring. Um. If he, uh, you can know because it's a pass effect. It's a ring of protection plus one. Ooh. <laughs> That's actually useful. <laughs> so what does that do then? It you protects you plus one. Protect, yeah. Adds one to your saves at AC and saves. Yeah, that's oh, pretty good. My, why didn't my AC go down then? Stupid sheep. <laughs> Any more for the gem or for the jade ring? Um... Nasir's not really done anything. He doesn't deserve any magic letters yet. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, it'd be Gargi for this haul. Because Gargi yeah. is the XP earner on these. Gargi, Garrus, Bentusi. Uh, yeah, Gargi Garcia. will have the, the Jade Ring. Yep. Okay, you put it on. 
Uh, a boulette is summoned. Oh no! It uh, it protects you from the harsh effects of heat. <laughs> uh, exposed to the sun and wearing heavy armor. It That's useless. Restoration of heat sustained damage. <laughs> or you can give it to someone else at the rate yeah. of one hit point per turn. Also increases saving throws versus heat based attacks. At pl plus two and reduces damage sustained from heat based attacks at minus one per die. So it's basically a it's a ring of coolness. So it gives you heat protection and it gives you healing and it gives you protection uh, directly against damage. And when you put the ring on, you also get a pair of sunglasses and a leather jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Hawaiian shirt. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's the jade ring, is it, that we've got there? Yeah. yeah. Ring jade ring is a ring of coolness, yeah. Uh, what was the... The last thing was just the, the stone, right? That no one's yep, just the stone. Hurry up, yeah. I, I bet the stone is a consumable of some sort. You've probably got to, like, break it or throw it at someone. It is worth... 15,000 gold, though. Maybe I'm wrong. 15,000 XP. Yeah. I don't know if I was meant to be privy to that, Owen. I assume the, the XP record was public. No, it's on the public thing. Yeah. No, the uh, st st stuff that... Uh, it goes into the record. You don't have to identify stuff to get the XP for it, technically. So... Well, that's fine. I just mean it, it means. I mean, I know that it's a parry up. I guess I don't know if it's yeah. a mar mar No, no. You're, parry well, up. You, you, there has to be a, some system where you're allowed to know it because if you get it out of the dungeon and you get the XP for it, then you know. Yeah. Don't you? So. Fair enough. Yeah, we got six thousand XP in the last two weeks, and we have no idea where. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Um. He was in the cave, the cave paintings. I don't know. Yeah, it was in the box. Yeah, in the, the box. cave. Wondering if maybe you drop drop some water on it. Maybe that'll do anything. Maybe. Yeah. No, nothing happens when you put some water on it. Hmm. Yeah. Bit of a long shot. Bit of a long shot. Could just be. A very fancy gem. Could be. We don't. We don't know that the Wait, gem is does magic. Does the dream catcher look like it has a slot wherein this gem might be affixed? No, it doesn't. Never mind. How much is the box worth? Oh yeah, the box will be worth something. You're right. As in the the metal box will be worth something. Yeah, which I assume you haven't got rid of because you didn't say you had. Uh, let's. It is uh, made of a rare metal called titanium. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and let's... Okay. Uh, if, it's, if a chest is going to be worth... Like, it's like £10. And it's... St I mean, yeah. It's going to be worth like a 1,000 um, XP. There we go. There we go. Should we sell them the metal? Good box? reminder. Is the box is the box like ornate in any way? Does it have symbols on it? Nope, it is completely plain. In which case, should we just give it to the? Not give it, you know, sell it. Yeah, sell it. But sell it as unobtainium. Yeah. Fine. Fine. <laughs> I'll add another uh, that's another eight hundred CP. Yeah. Um, I had another question. Uh was yep. um do they do they actually pay us this in um copper bits so am I, are we now carrying like six six thousand copper ish in well it, it well as c, c cp is cp is ceramic um yes, sorry yes but uh, uh you can probably take it in you can probably take it in um some sort of precious metal at the so it's, is it 10 ceramic to is it which way around does it go Basically, yes, you can take it in metal to a silver if you want. and a hundred ceramic to a gold. Ceramic per gold. Yep. So if you're going to take it in silver and gold, you can. Uh, probably Falmon will uh, will advise taking a, some significant amount in in like lot in copper coin chain, like in in coin strings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just so you know, he's like, unless you're, you know, basically, yes, unless you have a safe place to store this, I'll take at least 
some yeah. of it in coin strings. Yeah, I think. We... Obviously, coin coins weigh more. So yes, if you're like, I would like to have because you want to have gold is a lot lighter. It's one percent of the weight of the equivalent ceramic. Yeah. So we'll we'll keep like a th yeah. maybe like a thousand copper and then take the rest. Mm. Um, yeah. In, like, I guess uh, the remaining thing that might be useful to do now before next time, um, I say we'll, we'll have. I assume one. I, it, it obviously it depends on the exact events, but we'll have one or two more sessions in Dark Sun to um, to let you do stuff in Barlick, follow up on stuff you're interested in. Uh, but we should Nasir will be able to get Marcia hooked up with some uh, jugglers and uh, 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 you know tra traveling jongleurs, I'm sure, um, <laughs> for training. Some shady contacts of his. So she's she's absolutely want... thrilled at the prospect. <clears throat> <laughs> she's like, these are the trainers, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll never meet a more cunning bunch of. Yeah, yeah, these are the trainers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just gives up on, on complimenting them. Uh, yeah, uh, so it, its base cost 950 um, uh, for a thief to train. Uh, this is per what we use in Realms, BG and Alex. Yeah. Um, this is the same chart. I, oh, the much cheaper chart, so it'll be <laughs> 950 Um base and you need to make after two weeks an intel with check marcia whichever is higher so you want to make your intel with check whichever is higher i was just checking they are exactly the same so it doesn't matter <laughs> all right Shooting for 13 here. God damn it. <laughs> we always fail our training check. Have we so ever made is... a training check first try? You must have, logically. How do you always linger in training? Probabilistically. Like weeks. Um, so that's one extra week for Marcia, which will be 25% extra. I'll work this out and I'll put it on the group because it'll be. Um, like, yeah, it'll be like uh, an extra 225 or something, 230. Uh, yeah, try again. You get a uh, you get a minus one bonus to your roll or a plus one bonus to your stat, whichever way you want to think about it. Roll again. How bad is it going to be? So it's a 15 before. So you now need a 14 or less. Beach. Smashed it. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Maximum damage. I suddenly became super smart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you can roll your 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 hit points, your d6 hit points plus con, and you can spend your uh, thief skill points as desired. You can also level up another character. Um, what I will do. Before next time, do you want? Should we do it in the session or next time? I can, uh, yeah, wow, six hit points. Uh, but yeah, I, your your pickup Nasir will have city rumors. So I guess do you want us to do that in the next session, or do you want me to put it up on the Discord? Might be good um, to do some of that. Put it on the Discord. Yeah, yeah, that will give us time to think about it. And then we can yeah. sort of go straight into because then yeah, that session. you can then decide what you're doing as well as because yeah, but Master is obviously now busy for three weeks, but uh, Beecher's Templar can come in and help uh, great okay then Templar. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> it can be yeah uh yeah uh, it's either uh, stiff is the least valuable target for xp though you may still want you know it's a half giant so <laughs> who's going to complain uh yeah i get one more spell uh, tom in terms of you the, tra the training cost, Tom, is 1187.5. Oh, right. And that's um, and I've got enough XP for that as Kent, have I? Yep. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I do have No, XP not not for Kent. Sorry, that's the cost for Marcia. Yeah. So, sorry, what's... Uh, what's Kent, the... yeah, Kent... Um, so, sorry, you need to take off 1187.5 for Marcia 
and the Templar's training cost. 1187.5. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, I guess. And then how much is Kent, anything how much else? Would anything the on the peri training be? Um. Well, Kent, Kent won't be able to train, will he? He'll because he needs eight thousand. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood what was being so, said there. So it's Marcia's amount that I would take. No, no. For this. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the rest of you, there's a bunch of you that are now like well over half towards it. Like I think, uh, I feel like uh, Ben Tusi is quite, uh, no, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I meant Gog, he's somewhat close. Garrus is quite close, uh, probably. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but uh, the uh, the Periapt is obviously a big, big, th big pull for you. Um, but yeah, any, I guess... If, so we've got the Ring of Coolness. Uh, I mean, is is Thingy keeping it? Is uh, Gargi keeping the Ring of Coolness or giving it to someone who needs it? He'd, he'd give it to someone I mean, it'll still else. benefit from its secondary effects. It'll still benefit from the 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 heat protection, like the magical heat protection, but yeah. yeah. And the Periapt, anyone doing anything with the Periapt other than throwing it in the air? I think we just need to keep that with us until we figure out what it's doing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, your bard can have it. Gargi, he opened the box. Yeah, Nessie will take it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Put it in his great. Put okay, then. his necklace uh, or something. Tie a string around it. Keep it under yeah. the jerk in his my advice. That thing's valid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. No, great. Uh, in uh, that case, uh, we will. We're, I'm going to do anything else with that next time, and uh, I'll put up rumours on the group. Um, but yeah, should we leave that there for this time? And we'll, we need to confirm uh, our next date, but in a couple of weeks, well, two or three weeks, I imagine, depending on exact availability. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Great. Cool. Uh, no good session, guys. Thanks for that. Uh, uh, yeah, you made it to Balik. You're sort of successful. Yeah, no, I'd say pretty successful. Cashed in. Yeah, we're not dead. Yeah, yeah. We've got good at this game. Yeah. One part of it. It turns out the bit about <laughs> trading. Mm, marginal. <laughs> but does it matter if you're uh, not good yeah. at trading if you've not got anything to trade? Yeah, I mean, you did, did have stuff to trade. If you think about it, that would have been... Um, how much how much xp let's just really torment tom now actually before we oh. finish it's an important thing <laughs> tom's literally crying <laughs> uh the trader camp at the 65. yeah what is the bonus xp for profit <clears throat> It's stupid. Um, per, ceramic, per ceramic peace profit on a single trading mission, in addition to rogue award, that's one thing. Some people get uh, rogue awards and stuff for different things, obviously. Um, I guess Marcia will. Per ceramic peace profit on a single trading mission is 5 XP. <laughs> so, so, sorry, the, hang on. Given the... And that cost us nothing, <laughs> basically, because we took it out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Archaeology... Yeah. Now, obviously, all your costs for the expedition um, were te there were technical costs, but they're fairly nominal, like food and canks. Yeah, and that's about it. <laughs> so it would probably have come out as like in terms of it being. Oh, and that's just is it is it profit for her personally or profit for the group? Presumably, just her personally, like her share. Yeah, it's for her share. Yeah, but still, if it's 5 per XP, that's pretty much face value of what we brought back, isn't it? So there would have been just, like, a chunk of, yeah. you know, at least a few thousand XP. Damn. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Man, someone should have made a trader in between last session and this session. Sucks to be you. <laughs> Get good, rookie. 
Uh, so someone is desperately going to roll up a trader now, aren't they? To be like, we just need well, someone in reserve I, to I, pop the up. The dice to sell did stuff. not give me a trader. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, yeah that is it the is, issue. Dark Sun, Dark Sun is in order. Yeah, it's not uh, rolling a sign like yeah, yeah, the exactly, D&D. So. so, yeah, cool. Okay, then. Well, we will play in a couple of weeks, probably. Thanks, guys, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Cool. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I will end of the stream. Bye.